Damage and muscle growth. What is precisely the relationship there? A lot of questions to ask. So the first most obvious question is, does damage help to cause muscle growth? And the answer is that uh, from the research, we don't know. We're not sure if damage has a causative role to play, but we do know that it might have one, and we also know that it might not have one at all. So both would not really be surprises in the literature. However, we do know one thing, that in order to grow muscle your best possible way, you want to impose consistently more tension, you want to impose more volume, you want to get closer and closer to failure on average, and all of those things cause muscle growth and they also inevitably bring some damage. So what we cannot have is a paradigm that says zero damage is the best possible thing for growth because then we're for sure gonna be avoiding all the good stuff that brings growth anyway. And we can try to minimize damage potentially, but it's certainly not zero, which is why when people say damage is irrelevant to the discussion of growth, it definitely can't be because what we're doing to grow muscle brings damage in as a necessary requirement. So we have to at least take a look at it and see how does the interaction interplay. Now, the next question is, because we don't know if damage causes growth, but it sure is correlated with the stuff that does, can and does damage hurt muscle growth? And the answer is for sure if there's too much damage, right? How do we know this? Well, directly by a few studies of which some of the best are the DAMAS studies, and you can look them up, D-A-M-A-S. And these studies show that uh, you get an increase in muscle protein turnover, right, in muscle protein synthesis uh, when you train a whole bunch of sessions in a row, but it turns out that a huge fraction of that muscle protein synthesis when you really introduce a lot of training up front is actually just recovery seemingly from damage. And that as recovery from damage declines as an individual gets more and more used to the training, the fraction of muscle growth actually goes up. So this is an interesting idea that makes a lot of theoretical sense that your body only has a certain amount of recovery adaptive resource, right? Cellular machinery to impose on doing one of two things recovering you from damage and disruption, and two, actually growing systems and improving them and getting you more jacked. So if that's all coming out of the same barrel, so to speak, if you do way too much damage, you actually inhibit the amount of resource you have left to fuel muscle growth. So at some point, there's a competition between damage and muscle growth. We definitely wanna stay away from too much damage that prevents us from milking out as much growth as possible. We see this in lots of studies indirectly where beginners who are subject to what to them are incredibly damaging and incredibly challenging protocols, you know, five sets of 10 at a 80% winner max or 75% winner max for someone who's never lifted weights before is an excessive amount of muscle damage. What we also usually see with beginners who start programs like that in the laboratory is they grow very little or no muscle in their first several weeks of training, which corroborates the idea that maybe it's just so much damage, the body's like, I can't do both recover and grow, it's gotta be one or the other. And of course, we can see that damage is very closely tied to performance reduction. So the more your program damages you, the more muscle damage you're carrying through the course of a program, the more it's likely to dip down your performance because, well, literally the muscles are too damaged to do their best job at contracting and producing force. So even if damage didn't somehow mechanistically cause a reduction in growth, even if that hypothesis failed us, there's only so much muscle damage we can take because then performance starts to go down. And certain performance starts to go down our method of overload, which is high performance as the challenge of the system, start to just go away because we can't do them anymore. When you're too damaged and you're too fatigued to have good workouts, damage is indirectly preventing you from having good workouts and thus preventing you from doing the very thing, good workouts, that are causing muscle hypertrophy. So there's definitely such a thing as too much damage. Taking all of this together, what can we do as practitioners of lifting weights and trying to get more jacked that gives us a safe bet to make sure that we're not going way too far in one end or the other? Well, here's the thing. If you're not sore at all from your training, and if your performance is super great and you want optimal hypertrophy, you probably should slowly add volume. Why? Usually number of sets. Because the number of sets you do in a hypertrophy program has been up to a very high number, has been linked very closely to muscle growth. 
And the big knock on that is, well, you can do so many sets that it hampers your recovery and causes too much damage, and thus you don't grow enough. Well, if you're basically not getting sore hardly at all, uh, and your performance is incredibly good, you're clearly just not taking on a lot of muscle damage. You could probably do more and benefit from it. So if your program is super easy, your performance is super good, you're not getting hardly sore at all or no soreness, then you should probably slowly up the volume and keep going, and you'll probably have more hypertrophy over the period of weeks and months. On the other hand, if you get sore, but you recover on time for the next workout, okay, not bad, and your performance is up or close to stable, then you may add some sets here and there, but probably not as aggressively as in the first example, or you can just hold your volume and get really, really good hypertrophy, because if you're sore and recovering on time and your performance is stable, you're clearly challenging yourself to a high degree. It might not be your highest degree, you might need to bump the volume every now and again, but certainly you don't want to go too much overboard on that and really ramp up the volume. If the volume is too high, what you might get is an effect of overlapping soreness. For example, Monday and Thursday, you train hamstrings. You train them so hard on Monday that they're still sore on Thursday. You train them so hard on Thursday, they're still sore next Monday, and so on and so forth. If you have overlapping soreness, but somehow your performance is still stable, for sure do not add any volume because you're really getting close to that too much damage for growth thing. Do not add volume. Hold volume as a best case scenario. On the other hand, if you're having overlapping soreness, you're never not sore for a muscle group, and your performance is falling, you need less volume, for sure, a big volume reduction, because you're almost certainly on the other side of that U-shaped curve of volume and hypertrophy and damage and hypertrophy. You're on this side where the more volume you do, the less hypertrophy you're likely to run into and possibly even muscle loss. So. All of that taken together gives us a pretty good rubric of what to do. What do we do moving forward? Well, we're not exactly sure how damage and growth interact. And over the next five to 10 years, we're gonna be learning a whole lot from direct laboratory studies that could help, know, help us know how training works better and inform our training better. But we do know a couple of things. If there's no hint of damage whatsoever in your hypertrophy training program, you should probably do more for your best muscle growth, slowly adding sets over time. And if damage is hurting performance, if there's so much of it that it's making you physically weaker, you're almost certainly doing too much and you should do less. So we have this, don't do this much, don't do this too little, and somewhere in between here is your golden zone. That's how you can use damage and soreness to see if your program is roughly correct. Performance increases should take the rest of the burden, and now you have a relatively science-backed way to figure out how damage and growth relate and what's gonna get you your best gains. Folks, if you like these videos, please hit the like button, the subscribe button, check out all the links we've posted for you in the description. And if you want more information on this exact topic, look for the scientific principles of hypertrophy training due out at some point in 2020.